Oh my goodness, I really had a difficult painting last month. It was the rainbow. So this month I'm lightening up a little bit. <laughs> We're going to paint something a lot less uh, complicated. And so this is my distant lighthouse. My name is Yovette. I'm glad you joined me today. Let's go get started. Well, this is the sketch that I came up with for this painting. And I've done this with a black fine charcoal. And the reason I'm using this is because I absolutely love it. It's easy, easy to wipe off if you make a mistake and it's just a great product to work with. So that's what I use to start. I'm using water mixable linseed oil, one third part linseed oil and one third, uh, two thirds part um, um, thinner. And I've just mixed them together in this little container. And what I'm going to do is just go over my whole canvas first, the whole thing. And once that's all done, then I want to start incorporating my titanium white paint. Uh, that makes it more like a, um, a soft white medium. So I'm just adding that on top of the oil. It mixes and blends beautifully, so it's real easy to do. And just go over the whole canvas again with that. So now we're going to paint the sky. And I'm um, just using my 3 quarter inch floral brush love this brush. It's just a wonderful brush for, for so many things. And um, anyway, I'm just going to mix uh, using a col these colors. I'm uh, using titanium white, blue, ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, and black. And if your colors aren't exactly the same of mine as same as mine, don't worry about it. If they're even close, that's fine because even different brands will vary just a slight bit in their coloration. So don't worry about the paint colors that I'm using. Use what you have that's close or similar. And, and the same with the brushes that I'm using. If you don't have the exact brush I use, well then try a different brush. There are just thousands of brushes out there and Believe me, many of them will work for the very same thing. So don't be afraid to experiment and use what's comfortable for you. You know, when I'm doing a painting, sometimes it's a very small painting and I'll use small brushes. But if I'm doing a larger painting, a 24 by 36 or uh, 18 by 24, uh, definitely I'll be using larger brushes. So you have to use a brush or brushes according to the size of canvas that you're going to be using uh, for yourself. Anyway, let's chat while I'm doing the sky. You know, I have 80 years behind me now. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a long time, isn't it? I look in the mirror and I think some days, my gosh, who is that wrinkled old lady who's looking back at me in the mirror? I just don't know who that is. <laughs> And then other days I look in the mirror and I think, wow, you look pretty good, chick. <laughs> oh, Anyway, every day changes. No, no two days are the same. And, um, you know, that, that's how aging is. We, when we're starting out, we're so young and, you know, we know nothing. And, and it's just through learning all of the stages through our life that we grow and we progress and become who we are today. And, um, you know, aging's not an easy thing. I, I fight it. I really do. Um, I try to eat well. I try to exercise. Um, it's been a little bit hard since I had that foot surgery. I can't exercise the way I used to anymore. Matter of fact, I just got a recumbent bike because I am having some difficulties walking. And so I thought, well, Maybe a recumbent bike would help. And so I've only had it for like, um, I don't know, four or five days now. And <laughs> oh, how funny to see an old lady on a bike. Anyway, <laughs> I, I'm enjoying it. it. It really is kind of fun. Uh, it's stressful on my legs for sure. My muscles hurt, let me tell you. But I'm starting out very, very slow, just like they say to do and gradually go stronger and stronger till I, my muscles become used to the bike and I can um, feel comfortable using it. So that's one of the things I'm doing. And um, I guess I've always been kind of eating well, trying to anyway. Uh, I 
follow more of a Mediterranean type diet more than anything else. And uh, you know, one thing I do, I stay out of the sun. As a young kid, I was a sun worshiper and I had some of the worst sunburns. I kid you not, I, I mean really bad. My, my girlfriend and I, we used to go out and sunbathe naked. I shouldn't even tell you this. But uh, we, we did that more on more occasion than one. And it, even my mother used to do that with us. And uh, this one time we were over on the coast and uh, didn't, it didn't feel so hot to us. But uh, it must have been, the sun must have been pretty intense because we were out there for, I don't know, probably a matter of hours. When we came in, uh, we were fine. But as the day progressed and we were driving back to our home from the coast, my girlfriend started complaining that she just was so, so, so terrible, uncomfortable. Well, my gosh, when we finally got a look at her, we stopped for a bit, got a look at her, and her whole back and her butt and her legs and the backs of her arms were just blisters. I mean, just thousands of tiny blisters. Well, it was so bad that she ended up at the doctor's office. Oh, that poor girl. Luckily, I didn't have, I either wasn't in the sun that long or my body handles it a little bit better. <laughs> anyway, that was one of my stupid young experiments, or <laughs> these, well, my, my stupidity things in my young age. Um, I did a lot of stuff like that that was silly. Anyway, um, she came out of it fine. Uh, she, it was several days before she could even sit or lay on her back or anything. I mean, she was severely burned. When those blisters popped, oh, it was so uncomfortable for her. I felt so bad for her. But anyway, one of my, my, one of my memories from my younger years of being stupid. But that's part of aging, you know, we just do what we do when we're young and we just do what everybody else is doing like even smoking I smoked for a long time but I gave that up in my 30s and thank goodness because it's allowed me to live 50 years longer than I would have because I really think I had dep 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 what I want to say jeopardized my my lungs and my life my lungs were in really bad shape when I quit so that was one, one bad habit I gave up that, boy, am I glad I did. So anyway, like I say, part of aging, stay out of the sun, don't smoke, try to eat healthy, uh, exercise, do uh, drinking. I don't drink. Um, I experimented a little bit when I was younger, but I was never a fanatic at drinking. That's something I never cared for very much. But... Uh, those are my wide words of wisdom for those of you that are younger and can take advice from an old lady. <laughs> oh, and you know, I just accept things every day the way they happen. The good Lord puts things in our life. We don't know what they're going to be, but if we follow his direction through this little nudges, you know, that come along that say you should be doing this or that, just do what he tells us to do. I do what he tells me to do. And somehow my life has just been so good, even through the bad times, the difficult times. Um, God will see you through. So anyway, would I change anything in my life? Yeah, I probably would. But then again, in reality, no, I would not change a thing in my life because everything that happened to me along my life's journey has made me what I am today. And I would hope that my mom looks down on me and my dad, and, and I hope that at this age they're proud of me and who I've become. And so, anyway, that's enough of that, I guess. <laughs> um, I started painting when I was real young. I was probably, I, I did my first acrylic painting when I was 11 years old painted my grandmother's house. And that's how I started. And I was, I took art in school a lot. I was really good and when I was real young at painting trees, but that's about the only thing I was really good at. And uh, gosh, I just, uh, I just, I don't know, that's just something that has, I've just grown into it 
slowly through the years, um, mainly watching other people paint. Uh, I always wanted to do it, so I had that underlying desire, and that really helped a lot. And then, of course, I had some wonderful instructors along the way, you know, the Bob Ross, the um, William Alexander, uh, wonderful YouTube artists that I have uh, learned from on YouTube. So many different things, so many different ways to learn. So if this is one of your hobbies and one of your things that you desire to do, I encourage you to find one artist that you really like and follow them for a while until you get tired of them or until you think, well, I really can't learn much from them anymore. And once you get to that point, then start and follow another one. Don't try to follow 15 different artists all at the same time because you know what's going to happen? It's going to confuse you because every artist does something different. No two artists paint the same. Well, I shouldn't say n never, but most of the time people will develop their own style. And um, so just find somebody that you like. Follow them for a while. Learn from them. Practice, 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 practice. And once you feel you've got to a certain point and you need to grow a little bit more, then find something else. Um, that's how I did it. It was just a little bit learning, a little bit of learning here and there. And um, anyway, let's go back to the painting here. Um, using my purplish, my lavenderish colors, I want to make some little stuff in the sky here. I don't want actually. I decided not to put clouds in the sky. But I do have these little, like, wispy streamer things, you know, these little dark spots. So I'm just using this purple and my, and my three-quarter inch floral brush to just put in a few things here and there. I think you might like this painting. I really... Uh, I really like the color. This is an original painting of mine, and uh, I wanted to do something that had bright colors, but yet wasn't too bright. So I don't know. I just started doodling and came up with this, and I thought, yeah, this this would probably be a good uh, tutorial. Anyway, this is my little bunny brush. I love this brush. Uh, it just smooths everything out so nice. It's also called a hake brush, H-A-K-E, or a blender brush. And it just does a marvelous job of blending. They call it bunny because it's so soft. <laughs> the bristles are so, so soft. Anyway, this one, this little brush is a number six, I think it is, yes. And, um, I just want to take a little bit of uh, white and just underneath these grayish clouds just put a little strike of lightness because that sun would be hitting underneath. Just make them stand out just a little bit more. You know, there's so many things on Facebook now that are bothering me. <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell you. <clears throat> no, not, I shouldn't say Facebook. It's not just Facebook. There, there's so many things out there now on, in the electronic world that is just so confusing me. So confusing to me, I mean. <laughs> we have Facebook. We have YouTube. WhatsApp. Uh, Instagram. There's WeChat. TikTok, there's reels now, there's these crazy things called shorts, and there's, I don't know, Twitter, and oh, live videos, and premieres, and oh my gosh, you name it, it's out there, and it's just, it's way more than this old lady can handle. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's hard enough for me just to do one video a month. It really takes me a long time to do it with all the editing that you have to do, and all the, um, the filming and the 
oh, the just everything that you have to go through. It's really a tremendous amount of work. You have to develop a painting. First you have to get an idea, and then you have to put a sketch, for several sketches actually, on paper, and then you have to develop that out. <clears throat> and so, yeah, it just really takes a long, long time. And with all this stuff, there's so many things now that in this electronic world on the computer that uh, is just so confusing to me. I, I just can't keep up with it. So in that respect, yes, I am a really old lady. <laughs> anyway, to do these mountains, I am using what is a one quarter, it's a one fourth inch brush, one quarter inch brush, little uh, flat synthetic brush. And just using my shade, my purplish shades, a little bit lighter than the sky. Well, no, I shouldn't say lighter. It is just a hair darker. Uh, just doing distant mountains. I don't want to make these too dark, but they have to be dark enough to show up. And I want to try to maybe shadow a little bit on one side or the other of the mountain, just to make it stand out a little bit more. And now we want to bring down some shadow because it would be reflected in the water here. The sun is behind the mountain, so you would you would have that reflected a bit. And all I'm doing is just pulling straight down. They're just taking just a little bit of paint on the brush. I can't wait to see how this painting is going to turn out at the end. Right now it's just a vision in my mind, so <clears throat> it'll be interesting for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with brown I want to just make a very, very slight land line. Just sort of a little separation between these two. And let's do just a slight bit of highlight on these mountains. Just in a couple of areas. Just makes them stand out a little bit more. And I also want to just darken a couple of these spots. See, now that really makes a difference, doesn't it? I've just recently learned how to do chapters, and so I put chapters in my, um, my uh, rainbow painting. And uh, that was very interesting. It took me a long time to learn how to do it, but once I did learn it, wow, that's a pretty cool feature. So I think probably I'll add chapters to this video too, and that way you can skip around to different parts of the painting if you want to, and it just really makes it a lot easier to, to get around. So anyway, now I'm just taking some shades of brown, some black, purple, little blue, I just want a dark shade. This is going to be for our land area. And I'm just going to come in here. And I just want to fill this whole area up. In that last painting with the rainbow, I was having a little bit of a glare problem too, and I think I have that problem solved now with my new lighting. 
Um, it seems to me it's looking a lot better. You'll have to let me know if you think it's looking better or not. But I don't think there's quite the glare on it now that there was before. So your sketch is probably going to be a little bit different than mine and that's okay. You may have entirely different things in your sketch than I have in mine. Oh, I've actually got two little hills here. And just fill that in. And see, I'm leaving this little blank space here. I'm going to put a house in here, so I don't want too much paint down there. So I'm just leaving that kind of blank. And as I do in this bottom area here, just kind of make that a little jagged so that it's not just one straight smooth line. Just kind of jiggle it a little bit so it comes out. You see these little fingers coming out in the land. just a lot more interesting this way than just having a straight line. And now with this little number two, this is a simple Simon, simply Simon, uh, filbert brush, it's a number two, a uh, little bit of green, some brown, some of the dark color. We just want a really, really dark color for this. Unload both sides of the brush. And we're just going to come down and make some little trees in the background on the hillside. I'm undecided how many I actually want back here, but I'll just keep painting until I make a decision. <laughs> Load the brush again. And I want to darken this a bit because it didn't come out quite dark enough. Oh yeah, that's better. Loading my brush again. We're going to have oh, a couple three over on this side. I know I'm going to have one taller one here. This will be my first one, my tallest one. And just fill in going left and right. The Filbert brush is a wonderful brush for doing evergreen trees. Uh, it's got that little kind of a curve on it, so it really makes a, a great brush for that. So there's a little one, just a baby one. Oh, I, uh, I'm going to do one taller here. I think that would look better. Yeah, definitely. I like that. Loading that brush again and just fill in wherever it needs filling. And one more little one over on this side. Oh yeah, I think that's balanced very nicely. I like that. Okay, so now on this land area, I've got my number five palette knife. Uh, I'm just bringing some various colors down. I'm starting with orange and adding some brown to it. That'll kind of give us a, oh, a little bit of a glow, like there's some rocks, distant dark rocks back here in the background. Some, it's rocky ground cover, kind of. And just lightly, just, just like you're making snow on the mountains, you just lightly make 
like snow, snow rocks. We'll call them snow rocks. <laughs> So it just gives that dirt a little bit of a different color. I'm staying in a very dark tone for right now. And if you want to make yours a different color of ground, you can do that. You could make it all grassy. Um, gosh, what else could you do? I don't know, just anything you felt like doing, really. So now we just have some of the reddish brown colors on, on the hillside. Very striking colors. Now with all my dark colors, I want to make parts of these hills, parts of the hillside even a little bit darker yet, kind of like behind the reddish areas that I put in. So it'd be more like shadows. Now just put dark in wherever you think dark needs to go. With my blender brush, just lightly going over this. I mean, this is very, very lightly because I don't want to blend the paint. I just want to get rid of some of the, the, the thickness of it, I guess. So now adding some yellow and orange. And you notice I did not use red in this painting at all. I just used orange. I love the way the orange turned out. And now just a few little highlight spots. This is barely showing up right now. I'll be having a lot of layers on here. Now some white and then a touch of brown, touch of black, and starting with the lighthouse, and this is my number six brush, flat brush, um, you may want to, uh, you may want to use a different brush for this part here, I don't know. Anyway, I'm starting on the left side because I'm a left-hander. I'm starting on the right side, sorry. <laughs> I'm a left-hander, so I'm starting on the right and just kind of bringing a, it's like a little rounded motion to, to make it like it's uh, not straight across. And then going to the other side, I just loaded more white into that color. And now I'm just going on the other side of the lighthouse light, light strokes. Now I blend, I wipe the brush off and so I'm just giving this a little blend.
And now let's do a little bit of uh, darkness on this right side just to make it stand out a little bit more. I don't want black, just a darker color. And now with my little number two flat brush, this is my real small one. Let's just go ahead and start on this top of this uh, lighthouse, this little, I don't know, it's kind of like a little standing area where people can stand on the rail and look out. There's not going to be a lot of detail on this lighthouse because it's so small and so far away. And now with a little dark color and a little bit of orange. Let's put a cap on the top, a little roof. And that's probably good for a start. So a little bit of highlight on the left side here, because that's where the light would hit. And now going into that really dark mixture that I had, like the tree color, just make some windows. And if you want, you could do stripes. You could do like I'm doing. You could, uh, gosh, lighthouses are just tons of different ways. But this one has a few windows and there's a door at the bottom. So now adding brown to this mix here with a little white, brown and white. I want to bring a path in here, going down to the lighthouse. It's not going to show up very much because the light is behind the hill, so it wouldn't be a very bright path at all. Now adding some white to that lavenderish mix. I just want sort of a medium bluish purplish color. And I'm going to start on this little house. Now I don't know what they call these houses that are beside uh, a lighthouse. It's, they're more like almost, sometimes they're like a little shed. Sometimes they're elaborate houses with two or three or four parts to them. But um, this one I decided to keep it simple. So this is just a little shed on the side. So now a little bit darker color for the roof. So brown and orange, a little white. And I will probably be letting this painting dry like I always do and then go back in and do some highlights later. But for now, just getting all this undercoating in is great. And you can make your little house any color you want. It doesn't have to be this uh, purplish color. It could be, it could be green or white or yellow or any color you like. And now with more dark. 
uh, just a hint of a little window. A little door here. And a little bit of um, Well, I'm going to hold off on that for just a minute. Now some light color. Just hitting the top of the roof slightly. Because light would be hitting the rooftop. I actually thought about maybe putting a blue roof on this little uh, shack here, but then I decided, no, nah, I kind of like that warmer color better because it blends in with the whole tone of the painting. So now I want to make a white, take this, uh, my big brush and some white color, and I want to start incorporating a little bit of waterline underneath the land area here. Just making a very thin line underneath. Grabbing some yellow and brown and green together. I want to just highlight a few areas here to give a little bit of a grassy feel. Because this would be more in the darkness, it would not be a bright green at all, not a, not a light color. should actually make some uh, reflection down here, some darker color. Because this would definitely have some color down here underneath. Yeah, that's definitely better. I should have done that before I put the water line in, but <clears throat> really it doesn't make any difference. Especially on this right side here, just bring that all the way down to the bottom of the painting. So then just lightly, lightly blending that, making it kind of given in that water feel. I think this needs a little tree up here. I keep looking at this little corner here and I'm thinking, gosh, that one tree looks so lonely up on top. You could leave it if you like, if you like that look. But I just thought, well, a little one would be a good little eye stopper here. So now my famous finger trick into the white. Let's go right here in the brightest, shine, bright, brightest part of the sky. And just go ahead and just do that little circle thing. And then with your blender brush, just lightly blend it out. And there would also be a glow in the water here where it would be shining a little bit. So just lighten this area.
And I also want to just highlight a little bit on the lighthouse, just on the left hand side, a lighter color. Light would definitely be striking here, making it show up more. Like I said, I will probably be doing more work on this after it's had a chance to dry for a week or so. I find that's when I do my best work is after the painting is dried and I can stand way back and look at it and um, then I can tell what's, what's wrong and what's, what's not working. You know, another handy little hint is that if you take your painting and, and stand in front of a mirror and look at your painting in the mirror, uh, that way it's reversed, it's backwards, and so you can see a lot of little mistakes and errors just by looking in a mirror. That's a handy thing to know. But standing back is definitely one of the best ways to fix things. So now let's add just a little bit uh, indication of maybe some stones and rocks along the water is it water's edge here. I'm just using a light color, light brownish gray color. I don't want these to stand out very much because like I said, this is more in shadow. And now I just want to grab all my dark colors and make a pile here. Let's just incorporate this whole thing, everything that's down here, just so it's a big dark color. Because we have one more large land area to do. Just a touch of white. If your brush is too dry, just add a dot of um, oil medium to it. And let's just go ahead and make this land area here. Fill it in with your dark. And when your pile gets spread out like that, sometimes it's good to just take and scoop it all up into one area. Gives you a whole lot more paint to work with. It's surprising how little paint you use with these water mixable oil colors. My gosh, when I was using the Ross colors, I was using an enormous amount of paint. But um, I find with the water mixable oils, it doesn't uh, take very much at all. So that's really nice. I like that. <laughs> okay, now I want to incorporate into that dark color some green, some black, blue, purple, black, uh, green, And let's start right above the, uh, higher than the lighthouse, right in here. And I've all, I've described to you guys so many times on how to do an evergreen tree, so I probably, I'm not going to go through that again. <laughs> but just tapping, tapping, tapping trying to leave little spaces here and there because you do want to see something behind the tree. You don't want just a solid mass of tree. I'm just going to go right down here into this dark area, bring it down further. And we need more paint, so black, blue, purple, green. I'm 
one more tree right here. The trees always seem to look better in groups of three or five or seven, but in this case I'm only doing two on this side <clears throat> because I have the other things, the other trees and the lighthouse going on on the, on the right hand side. So I think that balances out pretty easily, but normally I don't do just two trees together. Although look at that, I did the little one on the right hand side too. <laughs> just two little trees together. So I break my own rules, don't I? <laughs> So now with some brown, some white, let's just make a little pile right here. I just want to do a couple of little branches in the trees here. Not branches, I'm sorry, tree trunks. And with some reddish color, some, excuse me, orange. And right over the top of this purplish color, some orange, some white, a little bit of dark, just a mix of colors, just something, something that looks interesting to you. And I just want to go over on the left hand side here and just make a little bit of um, kind of stone area. Again, this would be in shadow, so it wouldn't be real bright. It'd be more on the purplish side. And just lightly blending that out. Not very much at all. And now just a little bit more highlight here and there. Just adding, a, incorporating a little bit of brown, a little bit of earthy color. That's so it'll blend into the rest of the painting. And some yellow with green. Actually black, the, just the dark color blended in with this yellow. A hint of grass here and there. I have a, a little bit of a lip down here on the bottom of my painting, so I'm going to have to um, I'm going to have to do this after it's dry, and I can take the painting off the can um, off the easel. Blend that out just a slight bit. Okay, I'm going to leave that because I can't do anything more with it now until it dries. So, what I have here, oh, I have the painting has dried for, oh, probably, I don't know, maybe 10 days now. Uh, it's been over a week. And, oh, I just, so I had so much fun with this. So what I did, I went up in the sky, I blended more of that pinkish color into the purplish and I brought some of the purplish into the pink. Um, then I went to the lighthouse and I went ahead and I just cleaned up my lines a little bit. Did a little more highlighting. I changed the roof color on the lighthouse and um, then I went down to the little shed and I also brightened the front of the shed and uh, changed the, house, the roof color a little bit. Added the windows and the door and then I also I used a lighter green with my fan brush and I just added some of the grasses. I made much more of the grasses come alive in the painting. And then um, I went over to the left hand side of the painting and I made the trees just an ever slightly bit higher and I also added this little tree to the left side, the far left because I just thought that uh, it needed enclosing right there. And then the last thing I did, my little birds, of course. <laughs> so
So that's my lighthouse painting. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you paint this and, and uh, blessings to you. See you next month. Bye.